uh, well, I don't I don't have the agenda in front of me. I don't have my other computer set up because uh, I wasn't planning on running the meeting. Does does someone have the agenda? Um, okay. I do. It's old business minutes. Okay. Um, well, let's hold on the minutes in case Peter um, comes on. What's the second item under the minutes? It's a uh, pictorial postmark status update, which I oh. put on there. Okay. Um, go ahead, Kelly. <clears throat> so I've been uh, getting a lot of help from Marie, Peter's wife. Uh, and so we have, she's submitting the request to the post office, both post offices. Um, she, for, it was a formal letter. She wrote it. She did it all. So she plans to get that in in December. We also have releases for the parents of the two kids. And then we had to send one of the drawings back to one of the kids because it was in pencil and it was hard to make out. So we're waiting to get that back. And then I know she had talked to you, Carolyn, about, you know, whatever the celebration would be. Um, and that's where it is right now. We're just waiting. Once we get those letters to the post office, approval of that. Um, uh, Chris, when you were on, we were, we wanted to, um, give all the kids a t-shirt at least. Um, and we were hoping there would be some other like keychain or, you know, not a, a mug or a glass beer mug or anything like that, but you know, some other little prize. And I was just wondering, do you know from the friends of Deerfield when they're putting their next order in? Cause we, um, I think I, I don't think we have we I think we might be putting something in now just in terms of some inventory versus orders from multiple individuals. But what do we need? What, what do we actually need? That's that's we need, um, we need five T-shirts, right, Kelly? Correct. Yeah, five kids. And okay. and we we're hoping to get some something else like a keychain or something. Okay. And so the, and then we would the. That would come out of our account. No, uh, no, that that would be donated. Don't worry, that's not. Oh, there. okay. That's um, and so, so we need five T-shirts, and I, I guess they're smalls, right, for kids. Yeah, they're little kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, okay, uh, we'll get that done. And what's the deadline for getting them? Well, we're, when were we thinking of doing the um, presentation? It was at a select. We were going to do it at a selectman's um, meeting, so it's taped. And it would be part of the minute official minutes. Uh, we just need to make sure that the that they get okayed by the post office. And I don't have a timeline. They said 10 weeks prior to. So um I would think sometime in January or February, right? Yeah, February would probably be. Yeah. But there's not a huge rush, Chris, but we wanted we, you know, we we felt that um the kids should have some memories of this and even the ones that didn't win. Okay, so so by January 31st, we'll have everything lined up. Okay, perfect. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yep. It's it's really nice for the kids. We're we're trying to make memories. Um, no, that's good. um what's the next item, Kelly? Uh parade work group update. Oh, yes. Holly, how are you doing? Oh well, it's Holly and Kelly. Thankfully, <laughs> it's a good tag team. Um Things are coming along. Um, we're going to be meeting again this Thursday, um, but we're trying to finalize our paperwork to get the actual invitations out. We've had some hiccups with pricing um, and one hiccup with um, the print oh. shop that um, Amherst Design and Copy that Town Hall told us to go to. They just can't react to anything. So we had to pull away from them and get other quotes because they were taking too long. Um, then one of our members of our work group suggested uh, checking up at the um, Franklin County Jail. And in fact, they came in so incredibly reasonable. Um, I picked up the envelopes and I don't have, I, I don't have an exact picture to show but the envelopes are going to have a, a star oh. and be, be part of it um and a marching band cool so um we should have those out i would say probably within the week if not earlier um if need be we'll have um a work be 
Um, I unfortunately um, have been bitten by the, the sea bug a week ago. And so I've been isolating with my COVID. Um, uh, but you'll, you don't sound very sick. Are you doing okay then? I'm getting over the congestion. The last couple of days have been better, but I'm still, my, my, my back end is dragging. Um, it's, it just takes a lot out. Um, and so far my husband's good. So I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop in the house, you know? So you never know, he, maybe he's gonna be okay. So my energy level for the last week hasn't been great, uh, but it's coming along. Um, so um, let's see what else. Kelly and I went to the South Deerfield Fire District meeting, uh, no, Water District meeting um, a week and a half ago. And they were really terrific, the commissioners. Um, they have totally given us the green light uh, they'll give us something official um, once they get their minutes all finished up. But um, they talked about, there was a question about the wells on the property and whether or not we could have vehicles or people in certain areas, but all the wells have been decommissioned. And so that's not an issue anymore. Um, and they were very enthusiastic about us using their property. Um, the other piece of the um, staging areas is the mass DOT and we finally got some information and I have to give Peter Thomas credit because it was part of the whole birthday cake location um, that he found out about permitting and so um, Kevin Scarborough is helping with that permitting for mass DOT and for Sugarloaf Street which we have to get a permit to run a parade as well because it's it's state property. Um, so um, that's in progress. Um, we're looking at locations for where the uh, review stand will set up. And we're considering a few spots um, near the library. And anything else, Kelly, you can think of? I think those are the major points. Yep. So I think that's where we're at. Any questions from anybody? And where will it end? Where will it end? Holly? In Frontier Regional. Yeah, because you got the parking lot and stuff. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. And the elementary school parking lot as well. So uh, parking is one of our agenda topics for this week uh, because we have to look at where we will have attendees park as well as where we will have participants park. So it's a little, we'll have to figure this out as we go, but um, we might have to reserve one of the schools for participants and let the other one for people who are gonna park and walk in uh, because at a certain point, we're gonna be blocking a lot of roads. And so people are gonna have to park on the perimeter. And so we wanna make sure we have some parking options. Um, do you, um, so is Sue's Antonellis working with you on the transition? Well, we'll uh, talk about the post parade stuff later in the agenda. Okay. All right. Well, what's the next item, Kelly? Uh, it'd be working history group. Well, Peter's not here. Mm -hmm. Um, Jay, I see that you're here. Is there any updates on any of your projects? Okay. Um, the next item, Kelly? Uh, update from Friends of Deerfield. Oh, Chris, thank you. Okay, great. So I, I'll break it down into three groups. Fundraising, the second, the 350th Jubilee Dinner Dance on the 31st of December. And then the third, June um, 10th, Fireworks. And Carolyn can tag team with me on that in terms of where we're at. Um, so in terms of fundraising, um, we, we set out certain targets. Um, I mean, we don't publicize the total targets, but, um, and we've reached out as we gain momentum with smaller businesses and individuals, we reached out to what um, could possibly be lead donors to help out, round out the total fundraising. Um, and so far, um, so far that's progressing. We actually have two donors confirmed so far for our top tier, our so-called 2023 Society, which is a $14,000 donation from each. 
Um, and we have one of the club 1973 for 7,000. And we have several below that in the different tiers. And they're all on our website or will be there as soon as, as soon as we can get the logos up. Um, but right now, I mean, we, we've got commitments for um, beyond 60,000 in fundraising. And um, our target is higher than that. Plus, we know the town has, the voters have um, allocated um, up to 60,000. Um, so we're, we think we're on good target. We think we're with good momentum. And I'm waiting to hear from um, three potential top tier donors, one second tier, uh, and there's one that I need to reach out to. It'll be uh, kind of a special circumstance on its link to the fireworks. So, so from a fundraising standpoint, we're on track, but the next two weeks are pretty critical to get the answers set. That's wonderful, Chris. Thank you. So um, the bank account by uh, the end of this week will be above $60,000. So Great. that's good. Um, and that even includes a $5,000 uh, deduct for uh, for deposit on the, on the Jubilee dinner dance. So so it, let's go to the Jubilee dinner dance. Um, so from our 350th Jubilee, I think we have confirmed attendees at this point of about 135, plus or minus, because we're just always getting data every day. And... Our target really is for 225, to be honest with you. We've kind of done a realistic model of what we could expect for people that buy tickets in pairs, single tickets, as well as tables of eight. And our goal would be to have the attendees at a 225 level. I think we could only max out at just over 300 in terms of capacity. So, so um, it'll be a great group. Uh, all the planning is falling into place. Uh, there's been um, on site with Deerfield Academy before Thanksgiving with the caterer and the tent rental company and the, the other rental supplies that go inside in the dining hall. So everybody got totally on the same page in terms of power requirements and logistics and where to set up and all that stuff. So from my standpoint, looking at the notes that come out of those meetings, everything's totally lined out. Um, uh, and I heard another confirmation from Deerfield Academy today that they're committed to making sure we have all the setups we need and everything. So that's good. Um, but where we need help is to continue to get the word out, to, to get more participants, more attendees. And so what we're doing in terms of Friends of Deerfield is we paid for ads in the, the Greenfield Recorder. We paid for a series of radio ads that are now airing in the local um, radio stations, like I guess it, it, WHAI, WHMP. I, I'm not as familiar with the local radio stations as some of you might be, but it was kind of a package deal to cover more than one station. And so those are airing now, but what we need is to get on the agendas of select board meetings and committee meetings. We need agenda items where people can just give this news update. Remember this event is happening so that everybody kind of keeps hearing it and it prompts them a call to action, if you will. Go buy your tickets because we need to know by mid-December who's coming at the end of December, right? I mean, we, past the 15th of December, it's pretty tough. Yes. We could probably get a few more in, but it would, from a planning standpoint, um, getting the word out in the next two weeks is the most important thing. Oh, good. Okay, we will. And I think it's legit if we if we know what committees are meeting and what select board meetings are happening. As long as we get it on the agenda ahead of time, it can be a line item of you know update or whatever you want to call it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, Carolyn. Is there? Oh no, no, we love it. Um, uh, there's meeting on November 30th, which is this Wednesday. Yeah, so we missed that in terms of an official agenda item. I understand that. But that's okay. You can do it under Selectman's comments or public comments if someone wants to do that in the beginning of the meeting. Um, okay. At six, we are meeting on the 7th 
of um, because there's just so much stuff going on. Um, we are meeting for the next uh, three weeks. So we have a meeting on the 7th, the 14th, and um, the, the 28th, which the 28th won't help you, but um, the 7th and the 14th we, we will have. But you can do this on public comment, um, or we can put it on the agenda as select, more, select board um, comments or appearances. Doesn't matter. Well, however okay. you want to do it, Chris. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that um, the office knows how we want to do it. But okay. I mean, it's good to know those dates. And even the 28th isn't out of question. Why is this? Because whenever you contract on these things, there's always a plus or minus percent. And mm -hmm. if people see that the weather is going to be good, they might be more apt to get a ticket and go and say, oh, it's not going to be snowing, right? Or if they hear, or if they hear who's got, you know, someone, so-and-so is going, they might want to go too. Yeah. So we can accommodate several more tickets right at the end. Okay. But not, not tens more, but, but several more. Okay. So that's good. Um, so that, that, that was that. And uh, I've got the dates down. So we'll make sure we follow up on that. So then if we jump to uh, six months later to June 10th fireworks. Um, so here, here's the status from Friends of Deerfield. And it also, uh, uh, you know, aligns with what um, Carolyn has also done is that we, we're teaming up with a fireworks company that does business across New England, a lot in Massachusetts, a lot in Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, and they're called North Sierra Fireworks out of Montpelier, Vermont. And North, um, oh, can you just North, say that? North, North Star Fireworks North Star out of Montpelier, Montpelier uh, Vermont. Okay. And, um, and then, so we had a preliminary call two, three, three weeks ago um, with the chief of police, chief of fire, and North Star, North Star Fireworks. Um, and myself, and just kind of laying out, they, everyone had, was looking at aerial views of the town and new possible locations for setting off fireworks. And um, the consensus out of that meeting was the best location for fireworks from a crowd control standpoint and safety standpoint, um, and quite possibly from a viewing standpoint, for everyone, whether they're at home or at a centralized area, was off the top of Mount Sugarloaf. We knew right away in suggesting that, that it's the Department of Conservation and Recreation that controls that property, that there's various bird nesting concerns and things like that. I mean, there's been no secret in terms of what are the concerns that we have to look at even though it seems like the best venue, when you look at other venues in South Deerfield, they get closer to residential properties, closer to businesses, closer to the railroad tracks. The railroad tracks in and of themselves are a big challenge because it's federal government at that point. And so, so anyway, so what transpired after that is there was a site visit that the fireworks company came down and went with the chief of police and or the representatives of police department and fire department. They went up at the top of Mount Sugarloaf. They did a site plan. They scouted everything out. They didn't, they didn't find any flags at all in terms of how you would do this and do it well. Uh, they thought that they could control access to the mountain, the pass and the, and the, the road obviously um, there. Um, and so, what I've been working on is the concern about what's nesting up on that mountain at that time of year, right? Because we know there's been some special programs along the Connecticut River and that mountain, and peregrine falcons are the concern on that mountain. Bald eagles are not. Um, and, and we know, I talked to the Department of Fish and Wildlife, we know there's one pair of peregrine falcons that continues to to nest and, and to bear young on that mountain, on Sugarloaf Mountain. And so the concern is when they nest, when do the fledgings leave the nest? Because we don't wanna create an environment where it disrupt and they leave prematurely and get into danger. 
And so, so that's the, the main concern from a, you know, environmental wildlife standpoint. Um, but what they've committed to do is by the end of this week, Fish and Wildlife will get me any historical data they have on this pair and exactly the timing of how they do their nest. Because some of them may leave the nest before the end of May, some may go into June. We don't know, but it, it usually repeats itself every year. Um, it's kind of a, you know, statistical biological thing. And so we're just trying to find out because we anticipate that the Department of Conservation and Recreation will want to know something like that, because that's the one main thing, if anything, is, is a 20 minute fireworks show going to be disruptive enough compared to like thunderstorms, such that it would cause a premature uh, abandonment or, or, or leaving, I guess they call it, leaving of the nest. Um, and they start wandering away to areas they shouldn't be in until two or three weeks later type thing. So that's that. On a bald eagle standpoint, we think there's less concern. I talked to Tom Riccardi also up at the Predator in Conway, the Predator, uh, you know, um, uh, rescue expert, and he's a volunteer with Fish and Wildlife also. We know there's bald eagle nests down north of Sunderland Bridge on the island in the Connecticut River. We don't think that will be a disruptive situation for that nest. And they nest longer through the summer. Uh, but we don't think it's disruptive. So, so, you know, from that standpoint, you know, I'm looking forward to whatever Fish and Wildlife comes up with by the end of this week. But meanwhile, Carolyn, I think you filed the official application with Department of Conservation and Recreation in terms of the special permit. Right. I, I didn't put down who the fireworks company was, but I put asked, did, filled out the permit for the fireworks. Um, Chris, our um, administrative assistant, thankfully helped me because it was like two days filling out this application. Um, got the documents for where this was going to happen. You have to submit, you know, GIS stuff. And um, just to speed it along, because we were already, you know, behind, um, I just put it on my credit card and um, it went through the $45 fee. Um, so that's been paid that, um, you know, it's the application was accepted. The um, fire department has signed off on it. The um, fire warden has signed off on it. And the head ranger or lead ranger has signed off on it. We're just now waiting for the conservation person. So um, this will hopefully the information you have and get will help with the argument and We'll see where we go. I, I'm hopeful that this will just go through. We'll see. Yeah. And I think I'm at the uh, uh, point now too, where I know that the fireworks company had a huge commitment up in Killington for the last couple of weeks. There's some big kickoff ski tournament or something. Um, but I, and I, I really want the principal to look at alternative sites in Deerfield and um, so I think that we'll try to do that in the next couple of weeks as a backup, but I'm very concerned that all of our alternative sites will have an issue with the railroad line. Could be. All of them, I think of the best ones because you need kind of a, if you draw a circle, you need 400 feet all the way around. So that's 800 across the diameter, across the middle circle. Okay. And um, the diameter needs to be 800 feet. Okay. So, so 800, just draw a circle uh, around there. 400, if you're standing in the middle, 400 anywhere all the way around. It's hard not to hit those railroad tracks, no matter where we would think about the best places. Yeah, I didn't realize that we had to worry about the railroad tracks. Yeah, they bring it up because we would have to we'd have to marry this up with the federal government in terms of, are there any trains passing by? And mm -hmm. who's controlling fire along the tracks? I mean, the fire risk, by the way, with professional fireworks, the fire risk on the ground, just like it is in the canopy up on the mountain, is, is virtually zero because professional fireworks are fired at such high temperatures, they burn up in the air. 
they don't, they're not like consumer fireworks. They have a lot of paper and stuff, and that paper comes down and smolders and causes fire. This is totally different. When you deal with professional, this stuff is very high temperature and it explodes in the air and burns up before it ever gets near ground. So we would make those technical arguments, of course, to anybody that there is really low risk on the ground with professional fire. The only um, the only thing that was incomplete in my application was the um, certificate of insurance liability for, uh, you know, the state just needs the once. We yeah. And so so this is obviously a top tier New England fireworks company. Yeah, they're so used to firing permit. They're filing permits with Massachusetts insurance certificates. This is um, straightforward. I think we were waiting on getting all that paperwork because we were really trying to sort out the site thing as best as we could. Yeah. yeah. Now, other th the other thing in terms of permits in Massachusetts, just so you know, they can't fire fireworks if there's rain. They can't even set up if there's rain. Really? So they, they can't even do any setup work if it's raining. So, mm -hmm. so this does bring up the question that we need guidance from the steering committee. What? do we do about rain dates? And we can build in flexibility on rain dates with the permit with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's not a problem. But the thought was, if we are looking at the weather and Saturday doesn't look like it's gonna work, if Friday looked good, we'd do it Friday night. That was the first talk or, or the idea that the fireworks company had. The alternative could be Sunday night, the day after. Well, what do you, what do you all think? I think I like the Friday night better myself rather than the Sunday because the Sunday is like a whole day after the parade whereas Friday night is the night before the parade. So it seems like you're building up to the parade. I don't know. That so, was that, that was the idea and also the idea that more people would probably be engaged on the Friday night, Sunday night. Yeah, I think I definitely party. think Friday over Sunday would be preferable um, because, it, again, for kids, um, you know, school is still in session. So oh. Sunday night would be a, a, a school night. So I don't know. Kelly, you got school kids. What do you think? I think I'd be, yeah, preferential to a Friday night. So, and then, but can we have this, this, let's say that the forecast says Friday and Saturday look bad. Is Sunday okay at that yeah, point? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, keep it at if least within the weekend. Yeah, if it's the third choice, but within the weekend. Yeah. Okay. I would and do the, a third choice too. The, the other thing that, that we've talked about is if, especially if we do it off the mountain, where it could be viewed from 360. Um, the concept of synchronizing with music, like over a radio station, et cetera, becomes less attractive at that point. Because from a technical standpoint, um, when you synchronize with music, there tends to be more gaps in the fireworks. And if people aren't listening to music, they might think something's wrong. So basically what I've told them is, if we're doing it off the mountain, we're not doing it synchronized with music. We're going to do it a 20 minute wow show and it's gonna be done in 20 minutes. And it'll probably run from about 9.30 to 9.50 at night based on sunset and things like that. It could start five, 10, 15 minutes earlier, but we'll decide that well in advance. Okay. Yeah, so, some of that timing, I think, is going to come into talking about post-parade events um, because we're trying to do some coordinating. Um, I don't know what Sunderland did for their fireworks and where they were in relationship to other events, but in Sunderland, did I say Sunderland? I meant Whaley. Um, Sunderland had everything within a contiguous area, so they could kind of time their music finishing up um, with when the fireworks would would start. I guess, first of all, is 20 minutes usual? Because that sounds short. 
um, because I thought more half hour was about what a show was. Um, actually, they're, I, gener they're generally shorter, actually. Oh, okay. So we, we discussed 20 or 25 minutes, but the concern we think is that people lose interest after 20 minutes. So mm -hmm. we'd rather do a wow show for 20 minutes. Okay. And be done with it. Yeah. Yeah, I but, love but, but other ones, other ones that people have seen with this company do were 10 or 15 minutes. Wow. Wow. Okay. I mean, you're basically talking about a thousand dollars a minute if you do it right. Okay, so they're quoting you about twenty thousand. We haven't got to a, a formal quote, but that's the ballpark range. Wow, because that's because if, especially especially if we do it off that mod, we're not we're going to use the right shells. Mm. I mean, if it's Deerfield's 350th, it will be Deerfield's 350th, I guarantee you. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not um, comparing the type of show, uh, but the other two communities paid less, half of that or less. Yep. And I, and yeah, well, well, I mean, we have another reality here too. It's like the cost of well, everything of course. has gone up. Um, and especially the chemical components, et cetera, because of all the well, supply chain issues with, yeah. with how these things are made. But but beyond that, um, we would um, we definitely would go with a pretty intense show for 20 minutes. Okay. So it would be the equivalent of 25 in 20. Okay. I love the idea of Sugarloaf. If that pans out, that would be great. Yeah, well, we're going to try, Holly. We're working on it. And Chris, I appreciate you're doing all this background work, too, because um, I think that would be really helpful in getting the argument, you know, making an argument. So, um, Well, I mean, uh, we totally appreciate everything that's been done with some of these bird populations, so we don't want to mess up all that work. But you know, it is 20 minutes, and if we do our homework in terms of their patterns of behavior, we probably can make sure that nothing goes wrong. Well, we did have success with the cake, so I am optimistic about the fireworks. So we'll have to keep working on it. But, you know, we, we kind of have to be at a point very soon of knowing which direction. But like I said, it's a backup plan. We'll start doing in-person scouting out alternative sites, but I'm not real optimistic because I just didn't realize the proximity that. and everything. Yeah, you know this doesn't make sense though because Deerfield Academy runs off their um, fireworks, and I don't think that they pay attention to the railroad because they were far away from it. It's up near Eagle Park. They yeah, run through they run through Laurel. Yeah, the, train, the train goes right by the train tracks are right by Eaglebrook. I know, but that's you said Deerfield Academy. Well, they, they run they're doing it, they're doing it in the meadows. They got more than 400 feet clearance. Do they do it in the meadows? I thought they were doing yeah, it. They do it, they do it towards oh. the river. Yeah. Yeah. Out in farm fields and, and their playing fields, all their playing fields. They've got they've got lots of acreage there. Without yeah. anything near. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay. Yeah, it's um, a little yeah. different. Yep. I just, yeah, I just didn't realize about the railroad track. So, hmm. but I mean, look, it, it may not be as big of an issue as it is, but uh, but it's been brought up by the fireworks company that railroads are usually a, a big challenge. Mm. Mm. It would be though, because when you think about where the railroads they go right through the all the little communities you know, the older communities. Okay, well, um, is what's next on the agenda, Kelly? Uh, items for timed capsule. Oh, uh, you know what? I was supposed to call and I didn't call anybody. All right, put that on the agenda for next month. I mean, next month is like two weeks from now, so <laughs> it, <doesn't know. laughs> it works out well. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say call. Um, <laughs> I, I know we kind of, Peter had said that, you know, pretty much the size seemed to be because he had called around, but I was going to do some more calling around because we really need to solicit who's going to put into this time capsule business um, because you want something halfway decent and you want to 
you want to spread a stuff. So I'll call around to the, some of the other communities to try to figure out what was in the time capsules. But um, would I mean, all of I, I already talked to two communities. And oh, I you shared did. that. And right. I, I think, Carolyn, I shared it with you. I was just, because I wasn't properly prepared for this. Um, I just want to see. Um, I know I sense. Didn't you? You talked to Waitley, right? I talked to Waitley and Sunderland. Sunderland okay. did not do one at their last anniversary. They did it with their previous one. Um, so theirs wasn't. Um, what did wait? What did Waitley? I, can you just? Re, I, I'm sorry, I can't I, remember. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Just bear with me for one second. No, that's uh, fine. Because um, I I think it's really important that we we should solicit something from kids too, um, so that so when they do the 400th, when they dig this up to do the 400th, then they can look at it, and they'll say, oh, I remember putting something in. Obviously, we'll put the postage cancellation thing in. For at least those kids, two kids, but we we should do something else. From we should solicit one of the what, what, Kelly. What grade is your kids in? I have a sixth grader and a second grader. How about your second grade class? Uh, do you know? Do you feel comfortable asking the teacher if there was some something that the second graders could do? Mm -hmm. And maybe she can coordinate all the second grade classrooms so they could submit some kind of something for the time capsule as, okay. a, as a grade. Because second graders are kind of are really cute kids, you know, age wise. So they could be pretty creative and cute. So we could put sec second grade something from second graders. And, um, you know, they would only be like 58. They would be, you know, kind of thing. So they should be around for the. <laughs> okay, I found my, I found my document. Um, Waitley's dimensions of theirs was twelve inch by twelve inch by twelve inch, fabricated by the students at Franklin Tech. Their contents was a program of their two fiftieth, a souvenir mask, an etched souvenir miniature milk bottle. A souvenir Yankee candle, a 250 t shirt, letters from children to their adult selves, current street list of residents, list of farms and businesses in town, 50 photos of notable places in town, um, Greenfield Recorder Frontier Graduation Edition, which was kind of a cool thing because that would be around the time for us, although depends when we're going to bury it. <laughs> well, um, the the scoop issue about celebration. So they must have done some pub publication. Uh, town annual report, menus from local restaurants, and a list of most popular books from the library for the year. Sunderland, which is going back to 1976, um, they had a capsule that was a cast iron water pipe donated by Warner Brothers. It was six to eight feet long and they had all kinds of crazy stuff that was put in there and then bolted off and sealed and it's near the Blue Heron. Um, it's in the ground there with a little plaque on it and the Blue Heron has an agreement not to dig it up um, because it's part of the town history. Um, anyway, they put in a wooden baseball bat, a family Bible with some names in it, light bulbs, toilet paper. I'm not sure why. I'm just reading from what they told me. Well, you can compare the technology. <laughs> Fam family tree um, letters as of that date. Um, the next item I'll say and move on. Condoms. Baseball caps, baseball cards, sealed love letters, Kodak film, articles of clo clothing, including undies, cassette tapes, mostly letters to future relatives, and maybe a transistor radio 
without batteries. So I, say, I think Whaley's a little bit better. <laughs> anyway, kind of interesting. <laughs> Yeah. So the good news, the good news is we can do flash sticks, so you can put a lot of information in there <laughs> in two square inches. But is somebody going to be able to read a flash stick in fifty years? Absolutely, they will be because, of course, I still have VH test tapes, eight millimeters being converted. Okay, at, at this that's point. that's always the you know we have the um the movies from when I was a kid, and you know those are on the old eight millimeter you know and, so. it, and, it co and it costs an absolute fortune to have all this stuff converted but there's people exactly. that do it all over this country i have people in boston san diego that do this for me yeah yeah but it, it costs a fortune it does cost a fortune some of it's worth it but no i agree with you well how about we keep thinking on this <laughs> okay um and i'll get some more information too because i, th um, I think you were going to talk to hatfield Yes, I was going to talk to Hatfield and um, maybe Conway. Conway, yeah, yep. And I was going to call, see if I can find somebody in Westfield to talk to. Oh, that's a good idea. Yep. So I will call those three communities uh, for our next meeting. I'm sorry. Do you I know where the time capsule will be buried? I we haven't decided that yet. Did um, did we do we bury one fifty years ago? And if so, where is it? I don't know. I'm gonna look in that program book to see if we did one. Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't living in Deerfield then. <laughs> the grammar well, I mean, wasn't I, mean I think if you I think if your library project goes forward. There's already a monument out in front of that library that has something to do with 1973. It's like that's probably a logical place and it's town property, right? Yeah, yeah. I, it'll, I would, it'll be a, it'll likely be around in 50 years. Um, we're you know renovating the church and we're renovating the 1888 senior old senior center. So either place, you know if those projects move are moving forward at that time, we could do it at, as part of the renovations. Yep. Do you think the notion would be to bury it during Founders Day or at some later point of the year? Because it would almost yeah. be good to collect things from the events of the year and do would, it later in the year. I would do it as, mm -hmm. as, a, as a, a whole separate event at the end of the year before the ground freezes. You know, like we have to decommission... You know, I have we have 364 days on that cake, so um, you know, we have to take down the cake and move it to Leverett. So, I would say we do some bearing of the event, you know, at November ish time when we take down the whenever we yeah. take the cake, okay? It's sort of like you know, it's the end of the year, we're closing up the year kind of thing, yeah, yeah, and because that's like, gonna, we're, that's we're gonna like, happen before the ground freezes, so. It would be a good time. Yeah, or like in October around Columbus Day foliage season, kind of, so you get the backdrop of all that. Yep. And, and some people visiting that wouldn't normally be there. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's yeah. a good idea too, Chris. Um, it, I, I don't think waiting till the end of the year is a big deal at all, Holly. And that would yeah. be lovely to have some of the, you know, like the capture, a couple pictures of the fireworks, uh, you know, a couple you know a whole thing of i would love to have the parade and yeah i mean if flash there's a sticks, new, flash news, i know i know <laughs> a newspaper <laughs> issue maybe after each of these events would mm -hmm. be good to have as a keepsake yep and the programs of like some of jay's programs you know the industrial mm -hmm. stuff that he's doing and the history stuff that peter's doing you know yeah we can have those programs i i just think it's it, we just collect stuff too, but yeah. I, like, I, I just think it's really important that we keep pulling in the kids because the kids are really, you know, they're going to come back and remember, uh, you know, look at all the people. I can't tell you how many people have come up and are so happy that we're doing stuff for the 350th because they remember what a good time the 300th was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so we want, and I, and like I said, I, I was from Burniston and, you know, my dad 
drag me down. And, you know, you know, my sisters and I, we had to go because I'm sure it was a Slickman thing. And, um, yeah, I remember it was a fun time. So, you know, we want to have those kind of memories for people. So we just, we just need to make sure that we're including kids, a lot of kids stuff and, 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 and the Jubilee or gala or whatever that, you know, a lot of people remember going to that. So I think that is also a huge thing. So I think we're going to have a fun time here. Is um is there anything else on the agenda, Kelly? Yeah, post parade event location. Oh, yes. Okay. And answer to your question, Sue has been helpful, and um I invited her to this week's meeting. She plans to attend. So. Okay. Great. I, I know she's, you know, she, she'll have no problem lining up the bands and stuff like that. And, um, I told her that it wasn't an issue if we needed to do a deposit and stuff like, you know, like that to get them committed to come on the, you know, the 10th of June. Yeah. Um, she's already done some of that. Yep. Yeah. So, so the big thing is, is event location. Um, we've had some people want to to like consider closing down Elm Street. And so from, I think, before the tracks, obviously by Hamshaw and then further down and then making that, so the band would be set up there, for example. And then people could traffic from the parade over to where we would have bands there. And then they would think about having a kid's location out maybe behind the police station or something like that. So. People thought that was a good idea. We had buy-in from somebody that has a business in that section um, that was particularly interested in it because the businesses could open their doors. People can mingle and walk around and things like that. And then the other thought was having it out behind the police station. I know, Holly, there was no other places mentioned, right? We No, we, we, we were kind of waiting on... Um, fireworks location and if it was Sugarloaf Mountain, fingers crossed, um, having it right in downtown, um, honestly, maybe even to close off an area. Um, I talked to the Polish club about where they fit and what they want to do. And um, they said they'd like to open for the day, not be members only. So if we had it, again, contiguous where people could walk around, um, be part of our village of South Deerfield. Um, it would help promote food businesses uh, like the pizza shops and Bueno and Gianni's to maybe do something special for a grab and go kind of food and maybe do a few food trucks that would complement what we have in town, but allow us to promote our businesses. Um, so we would need some help from the town administration as far as whether or not we can do that. Now, Elm Street is town-owned, correct? Not state-owned? Yeah, because the old 116 is Conway Street. I had suggested closing down Conway Street because it has less traffic to begin with. But, um, you know, hopefully we'll be moving ahead with Leary Lot and, and that would be attractive and doing Elm Street, I think is fine. Well, the, the Leary lot, though, really, I mean, that's not anything no, but that's, that's going to be. That's for parking and stuff. And right. That, and that would open up into Berkshire Brew. The whole idea is to, you know, have a flow into Berkshire Brew as well. Yeah. I mean, and you, you have a lot of parking along North Main, but the Leary lot could be more if you especially have to have so many hand, hand accessible spots, is that you could set it up there so that people that need to you know can't walk as far um or travel as far um can um uh, can uh, deal with it from there and then you know you can you have a massive amounts of cars you can put on either side of north main street because of all that big area that right. they've always parked for the churches and stuff all along there right um, well, and so and, but, but and leary post- lot is convenient for people that need accessibility but, and also post parade, once we get the participants cleared out and any buses or vehicles they have, we'll have the school lots that aren't too far 
uh, for anybody who can walk, even cross lots through <laughs> from Frontier through the elementary school into town is absolutely. not that big a walk. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So you actually have a fair amount of park because you get Yankee Candle also, but that's a different issue because of getting them across uh, five and 10 or whatever, you know. That well, yeah, place. now we have better crossing lights and than there were in the past, so. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think, I think you're in good shape. I mean, there's, there's a number of lots actually not far from, okay and and just in terms of alternative fireworks sites i guarantee you the two most obvious to me are up at the high school playing fields and yeah. over the rain the railroad tracks off of extended treehouse brewery com brewing company property extended i mean extended to the south yeah and yeah. that's those are the but the rail is the issue there but maybe we can overcome that, um, especially if it's on a Saturday. Uh, there might not be as many trains that move up and down on a Saturday. We might be able to get a window where there's no trains and we can give them a fire protection plan that they'll be happy with. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, but so, so what you guys are saying in terms of post parade makes total sense closer to the center and away from those alternative fireworks sites. Mm -hmm. So if we looked, um, essentially it would be closing um, roughly just at the front door of Hamshaw, so you could still go Conway Street. Um, so anybody coming from 5 and 10 on, on to Elm could still go around and into town and get some parking. Um, have the band probably at that point facing towards town um have a tent of some kind on elm street and then have some open areas as well um, so we could maybe set up tables and chairs people would have access to food they could walk to the polish club um, I'm, I'm just looking at the options of how we would support our businesses but i don't know who takes that over and who makes that decision if we can do that oh well we would just ask john pachorik to because um... um frankly kelly and i are up to our eyeballs in parade stuff and we are happy to help be a organizer and a conduit and working with sue Ann and Tanellis, um who's been fabulous um but we've got to have a few more boots on the ground to get this aspect of our weekend um, squared away. Um, because I think it will make for, even if the worst case scenario is we had to ship fireworks to say Friday night, it would still make for a fun weekend to have things to look forward to. Um, and of course it's all weather permitting, but I told Kelly it's not gonna rain on the parade. So I'm not worried. No. You can't worry about stuff that you can't control. So yeah. And okay. by the way, by the way, people come out because it's a warm rain. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You just put an umbrella on. Okay. Um, question. Um, as we're looking at the Friday night, um, instead of Saturday, Frontier graduation is it the ninth? Or is it the second that year? I know we looked into this and I can't. I'm pretty sure it was the weekend before. The before? That's that's what I thought too. Because I know. I uh, I think on purpose we did not do it on the graduation weekend. That That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Because we want to be careful with that. Um, and from Deer and from Deerfield Academy's standpoint, you know, they have their reunion weekend and they're only having one this year instead of two because things are getting a little bit more normalized and controlled. Yeah. Um, and so that's the ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Uh they um they're going to whatever we come up with in terms of what the local events are, they're gonna make sure that all their reunion attendees know it. But we're not going to formally try to shift around schedules to, you know, to try to, we, we don't, we don't think that that's possible to do that to any great extent, but we'll just let everyone know what's going on in South Deerfield, what's, what's happening during the weekend. 
and where okay. it's happening. And so, yeah. so that'll be part of their packet that they get, um, you know, when they register and, and ahead of time, it'll go up on their website also, I'm sure. And so, but we're not, there's not going to be an official coordination of schedules. Okay. It'll be a communication of schedules. Okay. Just because, so you know, you know, Deerfield kind of has a programmed approach to how they do reunions because they have to do some class get togethers and photos and things like that and uh, speakers and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, so, but, so we, we have a consensus that we'll just coordinate as much as schedules as, as we can, you know, communicating them and, and, and publicizing them. And then people can go do what they want in their free time. Okay. I think that's great. I mean, there will yeah. be a percentage of people that will be interested. So that's wonderful. So Carolyn should, um, Adam Sokolowski has been the contact for the parade. Um, I would presume Chief Pachurik will also want him to be post parade. Should I just send him a message and tell him what our proposal is? Sure. Why don't you just sit uh, you know. Okay. Get, you just to ask him to that you're interested in closing down the street and yeah. Tom street is your number one choice conway street is number two um what kind of events you want i think i think we want to try to focus on elm street that makes sense since you're talking about you know working with the businesses and whoever's in that general area is going to have a bird's eye view of of the fireworks from sugarloaf and um so we want to we want to encourage all that kind of activity downtown. Yeah, and so when you tell them what you want in terms of shut off the streets, also give them a list of your parking ideas. And yeah. Because that tells them where they need to have officers posted to direct people on yeah. different ends of the town. I, I we need to you know certainly include the Polish club activities. You know they want to be open all day and. They'll have a dirt, certain activities going, especially, I mean, we're trying to focus on the Polish heritage, you know, more of po Polish heritage and immigrant stories. This this 350th versus the earlier um, colonial ones from the 300s. So, you know, maybe there'll be some activities that the Polish club wants to pr propose. And they, they, they aren't going to do anything that day. Um, I've already talked to them because they have an event always in July. Um, and they said they just don't have the volunteers enough to do two events back to back. Oh, I see. Okay. But but, but they, but they, they can run tapes of the previous event that day in the, in the club. You just do well, large screen TVs. It's easy. They, they were really good about... Um, should we need the property to stage anything, you know, that they'd be partners to help us out. So it's still evolving, but part of this was whether or not we could do this downtown business. So, okay. I would just let Adam. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll check in with him. Yeah. We'll and then I'll, I'll let him know we're working on the parking too, because that's on our agenda for um, Thursday okay. to talk about parking as well. So when's the next steering committee meeting? Uh, December 12th, I think it is. Uh, uh, December 12th. December 12th, Chris. Okay, so so I've got that written down as a report out date for Friends of Deerfield. Also, um, Carolyn, just to tip you off as a select board member, um, we're working on the insurance for the Jubilee event right now, uh, early this week. And the the application for the permit for because serving alcohol and things like that, um, and we'll put it on the agenda for your December seventh meeting. Okay, perfect, perfect. So it's, so we'll get all that done in advance. Okay, we'll uh, vote. We'll <laughs> wait to see. Don't forget. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that. Carolyn, speaking of insurance, um. When Kelly and I met with the water department, they said that we will need a um, certificate of insurance from the town. We'll get that. Yeah, where they are listed. Yep. So should I contact Chris or Casey for that? Uh, yes. Um, well, I'll, I'm writing a note right now. I'll, I'll, I'll get um, Chris or Casey to 
write out a certificate of insurance and get that stamped by our by um, Maya, our insurance company. Okay. But they said they have to be listed. Yes. You make okay. it out to whoever, like the water department. Okay. It's a town event, so there'll be, you know, our full coverage. Yeah. Do you think that Mass DOT is going to need that as well? We can get a whole bunch of them for that okay. day, and then we'll just fill them out. Okay. We get. Yes, we just, so we'll we'll um also we'll um from an insurance standpoint, one of the friends of Deerfield do like the Jubilee or the fireworks. We'll have the town of Deerfield, in the case of Deerfield Academy, um. And uh, and we may need to have the Commonwealth of Massachusetts name as this other insured for the top of the mountain. But we, we're already on to what the other insureds need to be on these policies from the different vendors and from any insurance policy we take out as a nonprofit. Um, the, the, the alcohol thing is a different, alcohol is not covered as a town activity. So that's why you would have to have separate insurance for that. But the parade, it's just normal activities for our town. You know, it's nothing unusual. Well, if if we have post parade stuff, we're gonna probably have somebody <clears throat> who is gonna wanna set up, um, I would say a beer and wine area. Is this is no different. Um, Berkshire Brew, everybody has their own insurance. Okay. And and what they do is they just make out to the town of Deerfield as as it's a certificate of insurance for the town of Deerfield. Okay. So it's the town of Deerfield. Just like Chris is doing this for, you know, the fireworks. There or we need one for the fireworks company. Mm -hmm. We we just get one from like Berkshire Brew or whoever's doing it. That's a normal standard kind of thing too. So it's no big deal. Okay. Okay. And we, but we as a town just need to be listed for the event. Yep. Because alcohol is not uh, in, in the interest. It's a different thing. animal. It's a different animal. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. yeah. But, but no matter what, no matter what you need general liability. For that. Yeah. Yeah. General liability is covered and that that's, that's okay. It's this all these events that we're talking about is normal town activities. It's just the alcohol, anything we, you know, with alcohol has to have separate insurance, and that and in, and our insurance doesn't cover. But everybody's used to that already, so it, don't don't and even if that. if nothing else will duplicate. If you know what I mean, just mm -hmm. to make sure that there's never anything. Yeah. Out of so obviously, Chris, if you're managing the alcohol part for the Jubilee event, you could be a good resource to help with what kind of insurance would be needed or. Yeah, you'll you'll see exactly within the week of what policy we take out and it will have alcohol provisions in it. Okay. But it'll have general liability also, and it'll have the other insured entities on it. Okay. And then I'll probably cross um get other insured for the town of Deerfield for Deerfield Academy for the two main vendors also caterer and the and the rental. I was yeah. just say, Chris, make sure you don't when you are marketing for or trying to purchase or this insurance, make sure that you under, that they understand that the town of Deerfield has its own insurance. Oh yeah, but but we don't I mean I don't get into that detail, right? It's it's we have to because we're sponsoring the program we have to do oh, ourselves okay. Okay. underneath our nonprofit corporation entity okay but i'm going to cover the town of deerfield and deerfield academy no matter what okay um all right diane we've hardly heard from you do you have anything are you have no, any questions no nothing excuse me i'm a little punk today so i'm just taking it and i apologize no i just wanted to make sure if you have any questions i'm still here i'm still here i'm uh just sort of listening. Chris is giving us a lot of information, so I'm taking it in. Yeah, no, it's great. So what do you think, Diane? Are well, we on the right path? It sounds like little by little it's coming together. Little by yes. well, little by little, there's a lot of different strings and facets, and uh, you know, it sounds good. I got my ticket. I plan on going, and uh, 
We appreciate you're, that. You're we appreciate talking that. about hyping the uh, the tickets. I tend to use Facebook a little a little bit to champion the town. So I'm sort of in my mind going, okay, how do I work this in somehow and uh, casually without looking like a pest? You know? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh well, um, is there anything else that anyone wants to address? No. Okay. Well, um, we do need to take a vote to adjourn. I'll take that motion. I'm, I move that we adjourn. I second, second it. Hey, okay. <laughs> all those in favor? Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Holly. Hi, Holly. Diane. Hi, Diane. Jay, are you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm Carolyn. Okay, so it's unanimous, you guys. <laughs>